Hey, -o. last month I made a guitar pick from nickel wound guitar strings and 1095 powdered steel as a proof of concept, and now I want to take it a little bit further and make some knives. You only get three strings that are wound per set, so it's going to take a lot of sets. Now this is a canister Damascus project, and these are the type of tubes I have on hand. I'm sure we can make one of these work.
I'll be hammering a small amount to draw out the tip a little bit and forge to a small degree the bevels. But most of the shaping of the knife is going to be done on the grinder so as not to upset the positioning of the 1095 core that is going to be our cutting edge. It's really got to stay true and in the center. Bending and manipulating the billet causes the weak points around the nickel and the strings to sort of open up. So there's some cracks that form on the surface here. I'm going to apply some flux to those and try to weld them back into shape by sort of smashing them flush. It's not going to work, but in the end we'll be able to take care of these with some careful grinding. Here's a better look at some of those cracks. They don't go very deep, but they are significant enough I'm going to have to do something. So I'll grind a false edge here. That's no big deal, uh, except that I've only ground a couple of them. So <laughs> we'll just keep our fingers and toes crossed and uh, push through this. Alright, so after squaring the shoulders and doing some thermal cycling, everything still looks pretty good. It's straight, so we're going to move on to the quench. Notice that my grinding, even rough grinding, happens mostly after the quench in two 400 degree tempering cycles. The nickel grinds very easily even after it's hardened. There's less chance for warping the more shaping I do after hardening the knife. So I think it's sort of a no-brainer here to take that approach. Awesome, let's make another knife. I want to make one with an even tighter string pattern, so we're going to put even more strings in this one. I've got some titanium dioxide here. Liquid paper doesn't always work for me. I've had some pretty variable success, 
But I've gone straight to the source, so to speak, and I bought pure titanium dioxide. We're going to mix up our own paste with it, put it on the inside of the canister, and see if that will work to reliably keep the uh, contents of the canister from welding to the canister itself. Just in case it doesn't work, since I've never done this before, I did put steel foil, stainless steel foil, on three sides of the canister, so I guess we're really just checking one side there. We'll see how it goes. This canister is one square inch. The last one was one and a quarter. There's about twice as many strings per area here. I'm pretty psyched. This canister is one of the easiest ones I've ever pulled apart. So uh, the steel foil worked as usual and maybe the titanium dioxide on one side worked as well. I'll keep using it and keep you guys posted. All right, so where are we? We have a billet with 90 plus guitar strings in it, right? And, um, I, there's no cutting surface. The nickel from the guitar strings is just not going to make a cutting surface at all. It's not really hardenable. So what I like to do is forge weld a piece of 1095 on the top and then a thin piece on the bottom. So this will be the spine. This will be the edge. And I'm doing that because this piece is going to bard everything together, right? Because if, uh, as you see, cracks form. When you bend this piece of uh, guitar string billet and try to form it and shape it, little cracks form along the edges and uh, it has to do with the nickel and the guitar string and the, the canister Damascus process. So if I barred a good piece of steel to both edges and I'm manipulating it in that plane, um, it'll keep the cracks from forming. So this is the plan to forge weld this all together. Let's see how it goes. All right, so that didn't work at all. Um, nothing stuck. I think it's because, you know, I can't apply forces directly entirely with a hammer or even a press in exactly a 90 degree plane, right? It's, it's gonna be off slightly. This thing is gonna be tilted. And so there ends up being a lateral vector portion to the force applied. And I think that that shifts things apart as much as it pushes it together. That's my theory. That's why I think I have trouble forge welding these thin pieces together. That may not be the case if someone else knows a better reason, just chime in. So uh, I still have good billet left. So what I'd like to do is just go to a canister where I know the welding environment is good. And we'll just put um, half the billet here, a piece of 1095 here, the other half of the billet here. And as you can see, there's extra space in the canister, no worries. I have a piece of 1095 that happens to fit perfectly. I don't have to do any grinding. And I'll put a piece of stainless steel foil here that should prevent any forge uh, welding from happening. And so we'll have a separate piece of 1095 from our good knife uh, steel sandmy steel uh, construction here with the 1095 cutting core.
Here I'm putting a downward slant on the handle portion. I anticipate at this point that this is going to make a full tang knife and I want sort of a downward sweeping handle. So that's all I'm doing here. Okay, so <laughs> interestingly enough, um, that didn't work at all. What happened was um, we got a good weld here with the 1095 and uh, core and the guitar string billet on both sides, nice sand my. This stainless steel foil welded. So I have an extra piece of thicker 1095 here. And I could try to grind that away or cut that away, but it's, you know, I'm going to I'm going to cut away too much of my guitar string billet if I do that. I think the best thing to do is sort of grind things down a little bit, you know, and then draw out this billet, cut it in half, and then re-weld it to itself with a 1095 in the middle. I'll put a little extra piece of 1095 here to make sure there's a good clean cutting edge, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to do. Um, if this doesn't work, I'm out of options. There won't, there won't be any other options. All right, so I think that worked, which means our billet is still sort of wonky, right? We have 1095 here, 1095 there, and then a cutting edge in the middle. So as I grind through the planes, there'll be guitar string, 1095 guitar string, 1095 guitar string, 1095 guitar string. A little crazy, but I think it'll still give us a good pattern. 